So I wanted to do a quick video on how Flyo is different. I feel really blessed at the, the reputation that we've got. I'm really excited about the progression that we've created here. I want to share it with you guys, what you can expect from one of our courses. How we teach things differently is we will go from you know, pre-pilotage, pilotage, up to um, a lot of two-liner training um, that we do in the Race Academy and with these, these new two-liner um, ENCs coming out. We're kind of experts in that field and then on to acro as well. I think the, the best way that I can describe this is to explain a scenario of a, uh, a typical group. So with a typical group, I might have someone with five or 10 hours. I'll have someone with a two-liner trying to perfect their stools and I'll have a, uh, your average pilot that's coming back for uh, another SIV with me. So in that first instant, a pilot with five or 10 hours there is so much to learn which doesn't even start to cover the safety part. What I will be doing with those guys is, is looking at the movements of the paraglider and the relationship between how the glider moves and how the body moves and how that will change the outcome of a certain situation. So they're really understanding the movements of the glider in a rotation and towards the border and the exit of a rotation because all of these movements when you fully understand the the angle of the wing and when you get to the, the border and then the feeling of the roll phase of exiting when you come to the exit window is gonna translate to making you a better climber. Okay, in thermals when you understand how to regulate your roll and the angle of uh, the wing, then not only are you a master of light spirals or deep spirals, but you're also starting to then master your thermaling. We spend half the time on a paraglider in a rotation and there is so much detail on the visual and the feeling um, that goes into rotations that you don't need a lot of energy and it doesn't have to be too extreme for you to start to understand this. And when you have low air time, it's important that you understand this for when you do start to go into thermic air because most people, they get their license, they go into thermic air, they get scared of these movements they don't understand and then they come to sieve with some pre-ingrained fear. Whereas when you do understand these movements and then you go into thermic air, you understand how to either use these movements to your advantage or to cancel them. And then we start to work on the fundamentals. So how we use our harness, our brake range, our situational awareness, and then we'll move on with this rotational family into collapses and by the time you leave you will understand all of the movements that are going to happen to you in thermic air and you'll have the safety aspect of being able to stop any rotation that you don't want now that will be with that sort of pilot and then on that very same flight i'll have someone on a two-liner and we'll be talking about the intricacies of a three-stage stool so two-stage stools We've been teaching for 15 years and now the way that modern gliders behave, you need to, a three-stage stool. And I developed the three-stage stool because I saw that my technique had changed with modern gliders and the way that they move and that there was actually an extra step that you need to do. So we'll be looking at the intricacies of, of stalling more powerful wings, um, two-liners up to triple C gliders, but there's a lot of two-liner Cs these days that um, start to need these more specialist techniques. And then I'll have someone returning who, let's say they're a very cautious pilot, but they're returning for their second sieve. Like the hardest SIV that you'll ever do is the first one because you've got all this fear of the unknown. You don't even know the rhythm of the day. When you're returning, you're freeing up this bandwidth to um, be able to focus more on the details. And then after your second, your third, your fourth, that's where I really start to see a competent pilot emerge. If we had a, a return customer that's uh, more confident, then we might be working on turning up the heat and being a bit more dynamic. Or if you've started to master stools, then it'll be spin to stool, it'll be dynamic stool. If we're looking at auto rotation, I wanna see all of my students come out of an auto rotation within a 90 degree turn. If it's taken you longer to come out of a, a held on auto rotation, you can be more aggressive with that outside break. We don't just work on the, the technical aspect, we work on the mental side of things as well. Any SIV group that I have, I'll be working on completely different things with one person than I will on the other. There's no group briefing or debriefing of any one maneuver. It's very rare 
that I get a group that are all at the same level and progress at the same time. It does ha happen sometimes, but generally I have real beginners up to what you'd consider advanced pilots. And it's, it's just an individual course for each one of those. If you're a completely blank slate, then great. Then I can just feed you information um, in, a, in an organized manner so that you can build one skill into the next, into the next. There's a lot of work that I do about undoing trauma, about undoing fears, maybe something's happened in the wild or something's happened on a previous sieve where you've been pushed too hard. Um, and that is gonna unlock much more from you than doing more maneuvers. About being completely confident and getting rid of previous trauma is gonna mean that you can go away and train confidently rather than coming from a position of fear. So the other way we work is because we are pilot focused, we are not maneuver focused. For me, the maneuver is a byproduct of how you are as a pilot. So we focus on the, the flyer fundamentals, the four fundamentals, and it means that regardless of the maneuver you're doing, you're not gonna aggravate the situation and cause a secondary event. And if a undesirable characteristic comes out in one maneuver, then we can switch it up and play with different maneuvers to get the desired result out of there. So if you're not using the full brake range and we add more power, then you're gonna start getting frontals. So for sure, if you do stalls, you're gonna have more power in the dive, you're gonna get frontals. By the time you do stalls, you should not get any frontals from, from the dive. If you've done stalls previously and you've had a frontal afterwards, then we need to knock it back and play with different scenarios where you can work on the catch and release. Same thing if you're exiting from a rotation weekly, then we can work on the spiral regulation, natural exit, rapid exit, auto rotation, the whole rotational families to start to understand that better because for sure if we do something a bit more advanced and you end up in a surprise auto rotation, we need to know that we, you, can, you can get out. So it's very easy for me to see the weaknesses that you have and your end goal might be a certain thing, but I know the skills that you need to do that. So we'll work on a few things and we can mix it up. You'll then have the skill to do this, but it's not about that maneuver. It's about having the skills and the, the situational awareness. And if you do, then the maneuver is a byproduct. You'll, you'll be able to do it because you'll understand the situation and you'll have the brake range and the body position to be able to do it. So a more mainstream SIV is more a tick box exercise and it will satisfy the ego to go and do a course and you cover all of the maneuvers and you might do them two or three times and you come out the other side and you can't replicate it. Uh, I get a lot of students that come here that have done all of the maneuvers and they are lacking very basic skills because you've gone th through it and it's happened to you rather than you being able to be the pilot in command. So it's much more important for us that you gain the, the piloting skills because then if it happens um, by surprise, you'll be able to deal with it. So another thing that we do differently is we have an online learning platform. When you book a course with us, you get access to this online learning platform that has different channels which cover things from the site briefing, safety briefing, how to throw your reserve. There's a section on basic knowledge with some tests. You get a test before and a test after all of the videos which covers the, the basic movements of the glider, being in a rotation, how to stop rotations, the difference between natural exits and rapid exits, the catch and release, what happens if you catch early or late. The benefit of this is you understand my language, you know what I'm gonna brief you and what I'm gonna say in the air, but you also can start to visualize and the power of visualization is really important. When you arrive on day one, we'll all be talking the same language and you will have an understanding of the glider's movements before you've you've done it. Also on the software, we have the doctor's recommendations. We've been working closely with Dr. Matt Wilkes. We have all of his science experiments that he's been doing with us and by himself. It's fascinating stuff. He's done us a bespoke PDF about um, preparing for the course, exercises you can do whilst on the course, covering fatigue, nutrition, amongst a lot of other things. We also have a goal setting section which is gonna really hone in on, first of all, how to set goals, setting SMART goals, and the SWOT analysis for your strengths and weaknesses. So you uncover 
the type of person and pilot you are and the type of person and pilot you want to be. So I had another instructor come here recently, Carlos, who was doing some filming for us and he sat in on the, the first day my first briefing with, with students and he thought I'd hit the jackpot with my students because everybody understood exactly what they wanted to achieve from the course, they knew what I was talking about, he thought the, the knowledge in the room was amazing and uh, I'd hit the lottery with my students and it came from this pre-course learning. The students be able to take a few months to absorb all the information of the site briefing, of the safety stuff, of the, the basic knowledge, the test, to then take a few little experiments and go away and play by themselves. When you arrive, you'll have more precise goals, you'll understand the level that you're at and where you want to go, and we'll all be talking in the same language. So that really helps your progression. The other advantage of gaining all this knowledge before the course is that we become more efficient on the day we don't have to bombard you with information about the site briefing, safety briefing. It becomes far more efficient and it's easier to recall something you already know than learn it on the day and then try and recall it straight afterwards. So another difference with Flyo is that we delve deep into the technical aspect of the pilot and the wings movements and we have bespoke software for the debrief where we can really zoom in, we can draw on the video, we can record our voices. Alongside with that, we add the mental aspect of it, the sports psychology side of things, because without the mental training, you cannot unlock the technical aspect. We have to take this technical knowledge and pass it through a human filter. So we delve a lot into how humans learn under stress, about uncovering and finding out our exact level. We don't know what we don't know, and one of the biggest strengths we can have is start to learn our, our level of, of ignorance. We use different techniques to make sure that you have the tools needed to take this technical knowledge and start to apply it in real life situations. Part of my job as a, as a coach and a mental trainer is to understand where you are as a pilot, whether you're timid or confident, how you can integrate this back into everyday life. So we talk about box placement at your local site. We talk about the different height levels of the maneuvers that you can do. We talk about your internal and external factors that you need to check in on before doing any sort of wind control by yourself. And it could be that you have 50 meters at your coastal site, there's still something you can do. Or you could have a few hundred meters at your, your local site. And depending on the wind strength or wind direction, you can have the knowledge and confidence that what you're about to do, you can achieve and that you've got a good box placement and the right height for, for certain manoeuvres because it's important that you go away and you put this stuff into practice. And we do enough in script detail on our courses that you will understand what is going on so you will be able to go learn effectively. Because this is a progression course and it's part of a longer journey, you will have the tools to go away and put this into place. But you will also have the, the right mindset so we'll talk a lot about positive mindset, we'll talk about a fixed or a growth mindset, and we talk about different aspects of sports psychology so you can go away and you can start to learn that because it's very important that you realise that the technical and psychological aspects of flying are two separate things. Okay, As we go through our progression, our technical knowledge grows and grows, but it might be that we are We've never been as good a pilot technically, but if we have a scary experience, then we suddenly we drop mentally. The two are separate, so we need to work on the technical aspect and on the psychological aspect, because the majority of pilots fly around in this sport scared, and they don't have any tools in their toolbox to work on the fear element. And our ultimate goal is just to be happy. We want to, to technically be safe, and confident that's what's going to save your life doing the right input at the right time when it matters but we might know what to do and be completely blocked by our fear response we talk a lot about how we are going to work under stress how we work under fear fear affects it's a it's a mental aspect but that will dictate how we then have a physical response to something that happens to us in the wild so we cover these aspects not only do we work completely pilot focused on exactly what you need at the time. We can work through any trauma that you, that you have or 
any fears, whether it's rational or irrational. And we can work on the, the psychological, the mental training. So we have this holistic approach that's not just about safety. It's not just a safety course. It's a progression for you as a pilot, how you are going to become the, the most confident, safest and happiest pilot that you can be. That's how Flyo is different. The evolution this year is we are gonna have an electrical trike with a big box and a 32 inch TV that we're gonna take down the landing. So when you land, you will instantly get the playback of your flight. So you get this instant feedback loop. Flyo has a building of 400 square meters with open plan with two permanent classrooms in it. It has a chill out area, a repacking area. We have loads of space to be able to dry any kit that gets wet and we have a nice clean area for repacking reserves either before the course or uh, if you do unfortunately end up in the lake. We have a fully stocked shop of harnesses and we sell t-shirts and other small uh, items. In the classrooms themselves we only teach SIV so we have all of the posters of uh, the, the knowledge that we, that we teach, the mental training. We have uh, the life jackets and radios, we have a large whiteboard and we have a 60 inch TV connected to our iPad Pros with bespoke software on there to do the video debrief. In this video my main focus is just explaining the, the, the differences, the nuances, the, the way Flyo teach. Uh, I've done a few online videos which talk in much more detail about different technical aspects um, and we will leave that in the comment section below. So if you have not heard of Flyer before or this has interested you, then you can delve a little bit deeper into our teachings um, by looking at the other videos that are already available online. Mm -hmm.